something like that, and you want some like steak and eggs, it's a pretty good place to go to get it. I hate Denny's because um, when we went to MLG Dallas in 2011, I want to say, uh, it, the convention center, there was nothing near it except the Denny's. Ugh. So literally, like five out of my six meals were from Denny's. It was the worst possible experience ever. Other than that, the play was great. I mean, the, the venue was great, but... All right, guys, we're loaded into the game. Let's do it. Game number two between Apocalypse and Petraeus. Last series of this group. Looking forward to it. John, take it away. Let's do it. For potentially the final time for this particular group, we have to the northwest position playing Terran in the red trunks. It is IBD Apocalypse. He currently leads 1-0 against the uh, final foreigner remaining in this group, who is certainly one game away from being knocked out of it and having his dreams of Premier League dashed against the rocks. Let's see if he can make a comeback. From Team Frenetic Array in the uh, Blue Trunks playing Zerg to the southeast, it is Petraeus. That's right, Aklon Waste. We haven't seen any ZVTs on this map ever. No, never. It's never happened in the history of StarCraft. Definitely not, so I have no clue what to expect. But I think we're in for a macro game. That's a possibility. We might even see a Reaper. We might. That's... Oh, look. There's a... It's a 12-12. I wonder what that could be it for. Could, it could still be a, a, a siege tank rush. You never know. Proxy siege tank rush. I, do, that, you never know. That's a trigger for me. Don't do that. <laughs> you, gotta, you need to respect me as a person and not trigger me I'm with sorry. things like proxy tank. I will never mention it again. I apologize. One of my most successful StarCraft videos of the last year, though, I've got to say. There's about <laughs> 120,000 views watching me lose to Proxy Tank. I need to lose to terrible strategies more often. That's how you become more famous. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> I, I've, told him, I've told people many times, people always ask, you know, do you have any advice for kind of you know, getting famous on YouTube or streaming when it comes to gaming? And I say, don't waste your time getting good at video games. It's a terrible idea. You'll be way more successful if you're dreadful at video games. That's how people respect you. Mm. Yeah. It's like someone goes on and goes 0-10 in Battlefield 4 and puts it on YouTube. Everyone knows that guy ain't afraid of anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That guy has the audacity. And you know what? I think that connects to the viewers a lot more, right? Like, yeah, because they're also dreadful, but they have the Donning-Kruger <laughs> effect, so they think they're amazing, but they know inside, deep inside, just lurking in the bowels of their psyche, they're terrible. Yeah. They're like, oh, secretly, I lost to that, that rush before. Yeah, but, but I'm going to type a YouTube comment saying I never would, and I'm GM, right? <laughs> exactly. Did you know that, is... that, that almost 80% of YouTube commenters are GM level or high masters? I, I did I did not know that, you, but see, it wouldn't surprise me at all. That's how disconnected from your demographics you are. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that 80% of Hearthstone video commentators are Masters 3, but don't own the beta? Really? Yeah. It's it's a strange phenomenon, but it's true. Well, they're, they're probably exceptional. It's just... Yeah, I mean, see. They're, they're incredible human beings. Like, they're basically the apex. They're the primes, the alphas of our race. Yeah, that's that's the majority of the population. I mean, obviously, you you learn you learn that as you get older, John. I know you've realized that already, but the people at I'm home don't know. I'm too young for that. I can't understand. You, you'll get there, John. I know. Sometimes you're a slow learner at some things, but somewhere somewhere it'll trigger, and then you'll realize. Okay, I'm glad you got faith in me, Green Top. You know that means a lot. Well, in the meantime, we have seen a pretty standard Reaper harass, but this is a greedy, greedy, greedy build from Apocalypse. He's actually changing things up. This is not the Pulp build. This is the I'm going to build triple command center and possibly a siege tank behind this. Although we may, that may just be for a Banshee, but a, see, no, it probably is going to be a siege tank. This is a change in style and pace here for Apocalypse. Yeah, this is this. If I'm Apocalypse, I'm saying, OK, I will see you at 15 minutes. Hopefully you don't attack. Well, actually, hopefully you do attack me. Because if that happens, I have a siege tank ready to kill you. But honestly, he's not looking to push out until he gets like 2-2. This is something that we saw way back when in Wings of Liberty. Yep. It's the famous 2-2, 15-minute to 17-minute timing based on what kind of opening you take. And gosh, was this an amazing build back then, Total Biscuit. It was. It very much was. And Petraeus still doesn't really... Do, yeah, he doesn't know. He He's seen one, and he has seen the factory. 
Well, no, I think seeing the know? siege, yeah, seeing the tech lab on the factory gives all indicators to know exactly what he's up against. When you see a siege tank that early, it's like, okay, well, uh, you know, you. Why would you do that? You know? Yeah, you've already kind of pieced everything together. So I think this is a comfortable position for Petraeus to be in. If I see drones or anything but drones until like the 70, 70 drone count, I, I'd be very surprised. Maybe a couple of zerglings just to fend off this early pressure, yeah. but that's about it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, eight, eight lings, just enough to try and deal with the reapers on creep, just to get them away, make sure they don't harass the mineral lines too much. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, he's he's walling himself off with eBay's at the front. Yeah, this is the the Zerg style of doing things with evolution chambers, but he's doing it right <laughs> here. Potentially risky, but yeah, it, it's unlikely that those are going to go down anytime soon. So I think he should be absolutely fine. He's heavily walled off. He's committed into this 2-2 timing, heavily economically focused build. And in the meantime, Petraeus can consider taking a fourth base and getting his tech going. Baneling Nest and Lair is coming down. I, if Petraeus actually tried to bust this, I would be very surprised. Yeah, I don't think he, he ever would. And every, that he would ever be suicide, should. surely. Yeah. But I, I do have to kind of question, I guess Petraeus sending those Zerglings in the early game stage, he was just identifying exactly what was going on, but he yeah. is slightly behind, I would say, a 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds in, in drone counts. Uh, normally, you will have your bases completely saturated. I mean, 16, 16 drones and then six drones for the gas per each base at the nine minute mark. It's the nine minute mark. We're slightly behind there, but it's it's approaching that pretty soon here. And just as you said, I'm anticipating that really fast fourth base. I love the Widow Mines that are trying to get over there though. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. It's a really nice way to do things. And if he's able to do anything with that, then that's great. It even you know, just picking off a drone or two is gonna be a pain in the ass. That for, I love that. That That is now not gonna go down for what another 25, 30 seconds. That's an amazing delay. And now he's going to move back here, and he's actually just going to block the location of the hatchery. And Petraeus' lings know nothing about it. They know nothing. They do not. Um, it's beautiful. And that drone's going to die as well. Another 20, 30 seconds right there. Yeah, that's, that's about to go pop. And this is fantastic the... play. The most useful widow mine in the world ever. Have to agree. I mean, that that really stunts the growth of, uh, of Petraeus quite considerably here. And Petraeus, he's just doing everything naturally. He's getting the Spire tech. He will have good time Spire. Uh, good time Mutas, rather. Um, Apocalypse just going to be trying to max out as, as best as possible. This is basically single player for him. You know? Actually, single player for both these players, but, but more so him because, I mean... Uh, it comes down to how well you can produce, how well you can optimize yourself based on what you see. Even the gases, you can see how technically he is only getting five gases rather than the six. A lot of people would have just thrown down the six because it's there. He realizes, no, I really want that. All right, well, the drop's going to come in through the side here. And that should have been spotted, assuming Petraeus was paying attention. And he was, because Lings are now moving in to intercept that. So that shouldn't really be a problem. Now, I'm interested to see what Apocalypse can really do harassment-wise, or if he really wants to do anything, because 2-2's two now begun, so this push is on the clock. We're going to be seeing it in the next couple of minutes. The ideal situation is that Apocalypse manages to stunt the growth of his opponent even further and make things interesting and make his push even more powerful. He's done a good job of delaying that fourth. I mean, in theory, that fourth should have already been up and mining by now, and you can mm -hmm. see by the fact that there's long-distance mining going on that it was supposed to be the case. That, more importantly, perhaps, the gas should have been mining for, like, a full minute as well, and that hasn't happened either. So the mute account is currently only at 9, and is about to be at 13, and things like Burrow only just starts. So, yeah, Petraeus is definitely behind when it comes to dealing with it. Yeah, And I like how Apocalypse just put the single medevac pressure on to kind of... Force his opponent, not force, but make him climb to make some banelings, and those banelings all could have been mutas as well. You know, if normally if yes. you see this much passivity, you can say, oh, let's skip banelings altogether and just get all the mutas out as fast as possible. And he, he could have had like 15, 16 mutas out at that 12, 13 minute mark, but you know, he's incapable of doing that now because he has to defend against so many things. So, uh, overall, I mean, the small little things that we always talk about, look, even the, um, oh, never mind. There was a Widow Mine up in the top right-hand corner that I was going to mention. I love that he incorporated that. Now, finally pushing out. Guess what? 2-2, just about to finish. Yep. It's well on its way. And there's still, you know, about 50, 60 seconds left on it. 
in-game seconds, that is, and Betrayus knows what's coming. But we start to see Apocalypse be a little bit careful because he is doing this push without tanks. He didn't build, he only has a single tank in defense. So he went pretty much bio mine after that. So if Petraeus was expecting to see tanks, then there aren't any. So we'll see how this one goes. So far, Apocalypse has not been engaging that well. Yeah. That narrow choker has actually got a couple of his units killed with the Widow Mines there. But 2 2 is about to kick in. And when it does, Zerg's going to have a hard time. It's a very familiar position. Last time they played, thing that happened. Bailing's now coming from the right side. Here's the big flank, but Petraeus not able to connect too well. But the Widow Mines have already uh, been used up. Still great micro coming out of our Korean player. Yeah, I wonder if it's enough, though, because it looks like this army is going to die. The reinforcements are coming in, though, so we might see a couple of dead medevacs there, but it looks like Betrayus just wants to get the hell out of the dodge, so I mean, that was a decent start. I mean, that really stunted that push. That push should have actually made it to a base, at least. It didn't, and as a result, Apocalypse's 2-2 timing window is starting to close, but Petraeus is still sitting... Uh, actually, Petraeus is sitting on 2-2 himself now, yeah. and... He now has got a couple of minutes before, in fact, three or four minutes before 3-3 three, three kicks in for the Terran. So Petraeus is not in a bad spot at all, honestly. He takes a supply lead. Yeah, I mean, he has his fourth base. He's on a, a good economy. He feels comfortable now to hive tech, which is great. Yep. And putting pressure on this third. <laughs> and a medevac is, like, just over there saying, I want to be a donation. And it will be. Oh. Yeah, it was full of Marines as well, which is even better. So, yeah, that one goes down pretty hard. It a little bit of harassment there to delay that fourth base going down, but Petraeus not really able to get a look in as much. But he does have map control, solid map control. There are great overlords positioned everywhere to spot drops. Like, there's no way a drop's getting through there in a million years without being seen. So that locks down Apocalypse to his base, and that may force Apocalypse to just say, all right, I guess I've got to wait for 3-3 then, and that's actually giving Petraeus that rare window to go hive, which is something we so rarely see from him. Yeah, he loves that lair-based tech for a long period of time, but it looks like he just goes lair until he feels comfortable, when he feels he has this map control, and then eventually yeah. goes to that hive tech. Now, taking the fifth base, this will be the new point of contestation, because all uh, Apocalypse is looking to do is drill into that, that fifth. If he can deny the fifth over and over again, you can play War of Attrition, even though it's off of four bases. Uh, it still is very, very doable. It is. Oh, free tank! Favorite kind of tank for the Zerg player there. Actually loses two Mutalisks in the process, so I guess it wasn't that free. But uh -oh. here comes another engagement, lots of links coming in, and the Mutalisks coming in from behind. The big Bailey flag comes in, this army is going to get absolutely crushed. The hot pickup doesn't pick up that much. <laughs> a lot of Banelings are just like, can we detonate, can we detonate? No. Petraeus is now in a fantastic position, having crushed two big pushes, is sitting now on five bases with a massive supply lead. This is excellent play here from Petraeus, and it's what we saw in game three as well. The amazing flanking, the great engagements, the good game sense to bring you to that point. And while 3-3 is about to finish, the army supply of Apocalypse is so much smaller. It is because we have eight starports out in the field and no, nothing else. Um, but the Zerging Banelings might be able to do enough damage here. Uh, there's not a lot of Widow Mines, so this Apocalypse. army can actually do a lot here. Going BCs. All right. Well, I mean, that's one way of doing it, but I don't think he's going to live long enough to be able to deploy BCs. If he does, this is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Now going in, he's going to spend a lot to take this planetary out, but he does have it. He's got the economy oh. to score. I'm surprised he's not detonating Banelings. He's actually losing a lot of units to engage against this planetary. In comes the Marines from the side, but a connection with the Banelings makes sure that that's not going to happen. And Apocalypse is driven back to his base once again. And Petraeus still has enough minerals and gas to keep going after this. I mean, he has been just overwhelming his opponent. A great attack at the fourth base will really stunt now Apocalypse's growth with his uh, his tech over to Battlecruisers. Species. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's ravens and Battlecruisers coming out. If Petraeus actually lets this happen, this could be hilarious. But let's be frank, he kind of should. You know, Petraeus is in a commanding lead. Yeah. As soon as Ultras come out into the field too, I mean, that complicates stuff so much since Ultras are able to just barrel into the natural and, and have that killing blow. That's the, the one thing about Ultras. They intercept so many of those Widow Mine shots, right? It takes four Widow Mines to take out one Ultralist. And with good micro, you can even reduce that like that. Two Widow Mines are already being used. Oh, here well, it comes in. He's got to be careful here. And good control here by Betrayus for the most part. There's four BCs at a time being built. This drop is just to buy time to bring the Mutas out of the way. He knows it's going to get shut down, but it's fine. The, 
if Apocalypse actually wins from this position, this is just ridiculous. But Petraeus is maxed. He just built 15 more drones, which actually was far more than he needed. He's going to go up to 90. So his army's going to be quite small. If BCs and Ravens suddenly pop up on the field with those kind of upgrades, Petraeus could actually lose, as ridiculous as it sounds. Yeah, he could. I mean, it's up to him at this point, though. It's not uh, likely, but yeah. it could happen. Uh, we'll find out, though. But yeah, I mean, the battle cruisers can get very out of hand. Uh, that, that's what it comes down to. But uh, be, still, six, uh, 151 supply. And I love this. Single, single Zerglings are going to pick up a lot of these Widowmind shots. Now, the Ravens and Valkyries are going to show themselves. And Petraeus says, whoa! Like, what? What do what? I do? Why do you have those? All right, here come the Hunter Seeker missiles. And they looks like they're going to pop all of those oh. Mutalisks. They're going to go down. The Bailey's just rolled into the base, though, and then stopped for T, I suppose. Oh, no, they're going for the third. There we go. So the BCs are now going to pop Bailings incredibly fast. There are actually a lot of battle cruisers on the field for now. He's building five at a time here. Yeah. But Petraeus actually does not have an answer to this. And not right now. A double drop over at the fifth base in the top right hand corner. Petraeus might not be on a lot of on a lot of economy pretty soon here. And certainly, but the base is being overridden. Alright, there's a lot of ultras just laying down on this production here. The BCs are gonna come out, but Yamato, is it done? Yamato, yeah, Yamato just finished, so. We're going to be seeing a few Ultralisks pop any second now, but this surprise battle cruiser is doing quite a lot, but Petraeus still has a commanding army lead. That's all right. Uh, Ultras will finally go down here, but let's take a look at the count. Units tab shows seven battle cruisers out on the field. Still, the economy, it has been ravaged at the natural, but there's not many minerals there at the main base. And he's still mining at the third base. Doesn't have much here, but trying to get as much gas as possible. And at the fourth, yeah, I mean, Apocalypse is actually pretty reasonable. I don't think it's nearly as bad. Corruptors are surprisingly <laughs> terrible for all anti-air, even though they're meant for anti-air. Well, the, the, the problem is there's Ravens with PDDs, and Corruptors fire very slowly. So the PDDs could shut this down very easily, and there are a lot of Yamatos available as well. There's 10 PCs on the field, Greetor! This uh, is madness! This is not supposed to happen! We uh, the point where the PDD pretty much immediately here. I, I guess he's not going... I guess he doesn't have the energy to do yeah. that. And the PCs are now actually going to die pretty horribly by the looks of it. If he'd had a PDD out there, that might have been a different matter entirely. But it looks like that's not going to happen. And the Corruptors are now going to murder BCs and demonstrate why you don't build BCs in this matchup. Especially when you're so far behind. But even Seeker Missiles would have been great in that position. He didn't have energy for that he either. He had no energy. Yeah. Yeah. I would, have built, I would have built less BCs and a few more Ravens. And then I think that fight would have gone a completely different way. But as it stands, these Battle Cruisers are going to die. And that's pretty much the nail in the coffin there for Apocalypse. It looks like we're going to be seeing a game three. That's right. Petraeus has played it really well. Uh, first two pushes shut down. The tech switch, uh, he reacted perfectly. Just overwhelmed his opponent. Ultra went in there with Ultras. Yeah. And then just did the Corruptor switch. Uh, it worked out. It worked out really, really nicely. I'm well... Up. I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> I wanted to see Apocalypse win that with that build, because yeah. that would be hilarious. But that is not <laughs> going to happen. There's only a single BC left on the field. There's barely anything left for Apocalypse. And there's about 5,000 bases here for Petraeus. So, yeah, that's... Yeah. This is this is certainly going to be game over, I think, for Apocalypse in this match. I think so. Although, there's still commitment to Corruptors. I'm a little bit scared for that. But, I mean, 84 supply to 153, so I guess I shouldn't be that that worried. Yeah. Um, you can still use them as well. You can pick off medevacs with them, so, you know, they're not too bad. And he's not building that many of them either. Apocalypse is going to have to do the best drops in the world. And even then, once those... God, once those Ultras just start hitting more bases and hit the third... In fact, what is his mining base? He barely has one at this point. It's just his third base and his natural. So, yeah, one base, one base economy, basically. Uh, with the mules, it helps out, but it's not going to be nearly as good. Corruptors will advance on to these medevacs up here, and they're going to go down. Or, excuse me, the medevacs will go down. Um, yeah, well. Yeah, this is just the a losing ultralisk. position. <laughs> these Ultralisks care so little for the Marines right now. It's like, I have a 5-3 Ultralisk. This is absolutely fine. I'm just going to swing with wild abandon, and everything will just die. It's really great. Four more Ravens coming out. Again, he could have used those way earlier, but Apocalypse is kind of showboating at this stage. I think he knows he's lost this game. 
and everyone else does as well. There is, there's no getting out of this, I'm afraid. There's still 75 drones on the map. Petraeus just crushes the Terran in terms of economy. The Terran is only even mining by virtue of mules at this point. Yeah. And he's about to mine that base out too. And oh. here it comes, the last engagement as the remaining army is crushed and there's the GG. Well played by Petraeus again, showcasing his skill, his macro skills. I mean, this build was...